Thank you. That's a hard act to follow. <clears throat> I had to write this down because I'm a little nervous. Um, I've been listening to your CDs in my car on an almost daily basis recently, and um, you talked about answering a question about the difference between meditation, the workshop, and another thing that I don't remember. And you said that meditation was being, I think, a passageway to allow an opening to blend the inner being with the outer world. And I was wondering if you would elaborate on that um, so that I would have a clearer understanding. Well, from our perspective, if we were standing in your physical shoes, this is the way we would utilize the tool of meditation. It's a process for raising vibration, period. It's not a process where you get in and make something happen in terms of identifying it and setting goals about it and, and uh, uh, speaking more clarity about it. That's more like what a workshop is. In other words, a workshop is where you focus your mind with the details of something that you want, where meditation is almost the opposite of that. Meditation is like the allowing part of the equation, while doing a mental workshop is like the asking part of the equation. So you, we always tease our physical friends a little bit. We say, we teach you to meditate because it's easier to teach you to quiet your mind and have no thought than it is to have pure positive thought. Mm. Because when you've been beating the drum on some subject and you say, oh, I think I'll make improvement on this subject, where you are is where you are. And so when you try to think about this subject, you don't activate it over here where you want it to be, you activate it over here where it is. So that's why people will say, why is it that the things that I really don't care that much about come easily and the things I really want are so slow in coming? And we say, because the things you really want, you really think about a lot from right where you are. So that's why we teach meditation. The process of meditation is sit in a quiet, comfortable place mm -hmm. and quiet your mind and focus on something that allows you to stay awake but doesn't activate something that is troubling or in other words it's just choosing some subject that you can rest with and feel good with it, sometimes Esther uses meditation to clean her vibration up fast because she's found that appreciation is every bit as good as meditation if she is anywhere in the proximity of appreciation appreciation tunes her right up to source energy immediately but if she's not in the vicinity of appreciation then stopping thought altogether will stop you see think about what it means if you if you deactivate your focus if you stop thought then you've stopped resistant thought and mm -hmm. if you've stopped resistant thought your vibration will naturally raise just like a cork will bob right back to the mm -hmm. surface you see so use meditation to raise your vibration and use the workshop to identify more specifically what you're wanting. Now, why would anybody need to offer a workshop anyway? If contrast causes you to launch rockets of desires, and that's step one, asking. And then you meditate or bask or do things that feel good, which causes your vibration to uh, raise to the level of what you're asking for. That's, that's the answering step two and the receiving step three. Then why would anybody ever want or need to get into a workshop where you are specifically asking for mm -hmm. things because mm -hmm. it's fun it's really really fun once you get the hang of how worthy and capable you are to be specific to to specifically ask for something and know you're not in alignment with it and then deliberately get into alignment with it and feel the release of resistance and the subsequent alignment and then to get to see the manifestations coming into place and it's just delicious creating it's yes. the same reason that the sculptor doesn't take the big wad of clay and slap it down and say there <laughs> it's finished Can you um, help me to understand the difference between um, the saying letting going, letting God, and deliberate creation of what we want? Well, when we were calling this the science of deliberate creation, mm -hmm. it was harder for people to see the compatibility with the statement let go and let God. But as we start talking about the art of allowing, 
that really is in vibrational alignment with let go and let God and that we always have to clarify that you are the God in physical form that has launched the creation that you are now detaching from the resistance and letting the resources of the universe now give you what you're asking for but the idea of surrendering you're not giving up your desires you're just giving up the resistance that was holding you apart from your desires I see. you can't stop wanting you can't you cannot become less than you have become oh everything that we talk about all day in these gatherings is this vibrational relationship between your practiced vibration and the vibration of your source now we haven't talked about this here today and we want to give this to you because this is a very meaningful place in this do you hear us when we say ask and it is given yes. and do you understand that step one is your asking and contrast helps you to do that and step two is source answers and then step three is you've got to let it in in other words that you're you've come along with us on these ideas so now we're saying to you that the reason that we can unequivocally say to you when you ask it is given is because when the contrast causes a desire to be born within you you are so trusted by source out here on this leading edge place to selfishly request the very best possible thing for yourself that source agrees instantaneously and goes along with it now hear that we don't think you quite heard it and it's so important that you hear it you are the leading edge of thought and you are selfishly oriented you and every point of consciousness in the universe which means the one celled amoeba in the ocean is having an experience of perspective and is having preferences even mm -hmm. though they're different than yours and spoken differently than yours it in every point of perception or perspective is having preferences born in other words this would feel better than this and this would feel mm -hmm. slightly better the cells in your body are constantly asking selfishly for the very best thing that they can individually achieve which is what makes the continuity of your whole work the way it does you mm -hmm. see so you're getting can you feel the perfection of this that mm -hmm. if every point of consciousness is selfishly asking for what's best for it then what's best for the whole is always happening all around you see yes. so now take that thought and flow with us a little bit that so here you are out here on the leading edge of thought and you had exposure to an experience that is causing you to personally and selfishly prefer something beyond what you've got and source says immediately faster than you could even listen yes to that so that means point one of this vibrational relativity has happened what you want and source are there but where are you in relationship to it still complaining still worried still unhappy source and what you want has joined your vibrational escrow and is there waiting for you that's what that buffer of time is waiting for you to find somehow some way to be a vibrational match to what you are asking for so can you feel how delicious it is once you've shown yourself that you've you, and you can do that today you got depressed and you got all the way to anger you've shown yourself that you are empowered you've shown yourself that no matter what you can imp and if you can go there then you can go there and if you can go there then you can go there and if you can go there then you can go there in other words if you can get from depression to anger then you can get from anger to frustration and then from frustration to hopeful and from hopeful to believing and from believing to knowing and from knowing into the ecstasy that is natural to you and we have to say to you that there is no end to relief in other words we cannot stop being where we are and expanding into more the expansion never stops for any of us so what's happening with so many people is that and and what what is what is the reason for all of your emotional response to your life is this vibrational relativity between who you're being in this moment and who you really are being in this moment so something happens which causes you and it happens all day every day which causes a new desire to be born and when that happens you got to get up to speed with a new desire you can't pull back mm -hmm. so if somebody says let go and let God we promise you they're not saying pull back those desires because that defies the way the universe mm -hmm. is established it defies all the laws of the universe as we know them to be you see you can you can withdraw your resistance but you cannot become less than your leading edge environment has caused you to be the other day Esther right before her eyes felt a new desire born 
She felt it happen. Jerry was standing right next to her. She looked at him and she said, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. He said, what? She said, we've got no choice but to go there. Mm. You, you have to go there. You, and once it's born, you're never yeah. happy again yeah. until you go there. You've got no choice but to go there, yeah. you see. So you can let go and you can let God, but you can never stop creating. You can never stop thinking. You can never stop being. You can never stop offering vibration, but you can deliberately control vibration. And that's the power of those workshops to deliberately control thought and then see universal response to your thought. That's ecstasy. That's deliberate creating ecstasy. Good time for a segment of refreshment. If there's something more, we can begin with you after. It's very quick. Give it to us fast. Okay. There is a teacher in India that I spent some time with who said that the earth plane was the only plane in all of the galaxies where you can truly experience yourself as God. The only physical plane? The earth plane. We think there's misunderstanding either in what you heard or in what was said. Probably what I heard. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good time for a segment of refreshment.